The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship. It is so good to see all of you here in the sanctuary, and it is also so good to see everyone who is joining us on the live stream this morning. Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday, which is also called the Sunday of the Passion. And you will notice that there will be a shift in tone in the service as we start with the joyful triumph, triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem with palm branches, but then we move into the story of the passion or the suffering and death of Christ. On Passion Sunday, it is a tradition that during the reading of the gospel, the parts that are assigned to the crowds and others are read by the congregation. So you will notice that in your bulletin, there are portions of the gospel that are in bold face, and we do encourage you to read those along quietly, out loud but quietly, during the gospel reading. I want to thank Kathy Hubbard and Diane Massey for offering special music for us here today and blessing our service. Today does begin our observance of Holy Week, which will continue for Maundy Thursday and Good Friday with online-only pre-recorded services. So Maundy Thursday, Good Friday will be online-only pre-recorded but we will be back in the sanctuary and back on the live stream for Easter Sunday. And if you, if you intend to be in the sanctuary on Easter Sunday, please remember we do need you to call or email the church office ahead of time so we can plan out socially distanced seating. We also do have um, a limited number of special flowers that we will have around the altar for Easter Sunday. You can email the church office with sponsorship information for those, and they're only $8 a piece. So if you just email the church, then we will um, be putting that together. Just for those of you who are here in the building, a reminder of our safety precautions. Please do keep your mask on, covering your nose and your mouth the whole time you are in the building, except when you are receiving communion. Another precaution that we have to reduce airflow is we ask that when you make the liturgical responses that you just say those a little bit more quietly. At each seat, there should have been a um, worship attendance slip. We do ask that you fill those out, um, complete them with the names and phone numbers of everyone that is, that is in your group, and you can return those along with the used pens in the um, baskets as you are dismissed for communion. Also, there is an offering plate there as you, uh, as you leave. And to folks who are on the live stream, I will remind you, you can go to rlcmilford.com slash give uh, if you are so moved to make an offering to support our service. For our prayers, we have a number of prayer requests. Please pray for Pat Sparks. She is our administrative assistant. She was hospitalized this past week uh, for some testing. She's doing a lot better and is back home, but do keep her in your prayers. We also pray for the family and friends of Lillian Willie, who died yesterday at Milford Place. Also, please pray for Jay Connessy and his family at the death of Jay's mother, Doretta Connessy, this past week. And then finally, we do pray for Diane Massey and her family. Diane is with us here today at the death of her mother, Cheryl DeLuca. We pray that the gospel promise of the resurrection and the presence of the Holy Spirit would comfort all who grieve. With those announcements, I invite you to please stand as you are able. And if you've got your palm branches, you can have them at the ready. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts by which you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from St. Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, 
Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. I invite you now to raise your palm branches. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed son of David and king of kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him always with perfect obedience. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated for the music.
A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated for the majority of the gospel reading until the last paragraph. It is traditional to stand starting when the gospel tells of Jesus on the cross at noontime. When that time comes, I will invite you to stand. And again, please read together the parts that are printed in bold in your bulletin. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
And there they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. Please stand as you are able. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Do we have anyone with us today who is weary? After more than a year of pandemic, isolation, and disruption, a year of so many deaths, a year when the pain and anger of those who have faced discrimination has boiled over in rage, a year of partisan conflict that has made us wonder if red and blue Americans even live in the same world. Is there anyone here who is weary? Amen. I am. Me too. I'm not ashamed to admit it, and I don't think I hear. All right. Amen. Yep. We're not alone in that, are we? Well, Isaiah's prophecy that we heard read tells of the suffering servant of the Lord, who Christians say is Jesus himself, who says he can sustain the weary with a word. So what is this word? this word that can give us strength for our hearts and souls? Well, a better question to ask is, who is this teacher? Who is this servant of the Lord who says he can sustain us? How can anyone take these burdens off of our backs and set us free to live and laugh and breathe again? Well, we just heard the story of the servant's suffering. The Son of God unjustly arrested, beaten, 
tortured by agents of the state. The very embodiment of all love and goodness rejected, mocked, and denied by the good religious people. And the great mystery of the gospel is that this suffering, this passion, is exactly how the servant becomes the one who can sustain the weary, like us, with a word. Jesus is the giver of life because he entered into death for us. He is the bringer of all hope because he dove into the depths of our despair. The Son of God in his suffering is the sustaining word. Jesus is the very promise of God nailed to the cross. And he did not come down. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. Let him come down so that we may believe, they jeered at him. But he didn't. Now, he could have. He is the Son of God. But he chose the cross. And he chose to stay there, bearing your sin, my sin, the sin of the world in his body. All this so that you could live. All so that we could be forgiven. All so that the power of sin and death over us all would be broken. Jesus took all the evil in the world, all the evil in our hearts, and he bore that burden for us. And that's the word. Jesus is the word. He sustains the weary by entering into our weariness with the strength of his perfect love. Whatever your struggle is today, Jesus knows it even better than you do. Whatever burdens you are carrying, he feels them far more heavily than we do. All the isolation and frustration and fear and anger of this last year, he felt it nailed to his hands and feet. All the tears of grief and rage over those who have died unjustly, those who did not need to die, those tears burned in him like bitter wine. And he took it. He can sustain the weary because he bears your weariness in his body. Now, the human reaction to being in a place of suffering is we would do anything to get out of it. And I think that is part of what is driving so much of the anger and division and confusion in our world because everything in our minds and bodies wants this uncertainty and isolation and anxiety to be over. So I think we can understand the crowd saying to Jesus, what kind of savior are you if you can't even save yourself? But the good news is not saving himself is how Jesus saves us. Amen. In his deep love for you, he takes your grief, your worry, your frustration, and he bears it on the cross. Now, hear me loud and clear. This doesn't mean that he makes the bad stuff go away. But here's the mystery. When we entrust our pain, our struggle, 
even our sin to him? There on the cross, it is transformed. The love of Jesus changes it from a poison that will kill us to a fire that will purify us. The burden you're carrying doesn't go away, but it does lose the power to take life from you. When we entrust it to the love of Jesus, he takes our burden into his heart and he makes your place of trial into the place where faith and hope and love can blossom and grow in your heart. Now again, I want to be clear. I'm not giving you the platitude that suffering just makes you stronger. I'm not even saying, oh, Jesus makes you stronger. Suffering stays evil. But Jesus is greater than evil. We remain weak. But Jesus becomes our strength. So, will you let your burden go into the love of Jesus? Will you give up your illusions of control? Will you admit that your coping mechanisms, healthy and unhealthy, just aren't up to the task? Will you surrender all of your strength and all of your weakness into his grace? Because, my friends, he has already taken that burden on for you. Your pain, your fear, Even your guilt and shame, they are already hanging there on the cross with him. He has taken them from you because he did not come to save himself. Jesus came to suffer, to save you. So let Jesus sustain you through all the struggles that have come and through all the trials that are still to be with the word of his love, which is the word of the cross. Amen. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able for the prayers of the church. Let us return to the Lord our God and pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. We praise you, O God, for your love and power revealed in the humility, suffering, and death of your Son. We pray that the day would come quickly when all people will see him as their glorious Savior and King and receive the endless peace of his salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord Jesus, come and reign over us and over your whole church. Make us to be people of faith, hope, and love who can serve this world not with what it wants, but with the grace and truth this world needs. Make us holy and steadfast so that our service and witness may bring life to others and glory to you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Be at work, Holy Spirit, to inspire our worship this coming Holy Week. By your grace, may our praise and devotion be pleasing to you. Empower us and many others to hear the good news of Jesus so that we may all be drawn into your saving embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all people, we pray for an end to the global pandemic. Be with those who are ill and speed the work of vaccination. Give all people your blessings of good health, peace, safety, loving relationships, and strong communities. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Deliver your people, O oh God, from brokenness of body, mind, or spirit. Bind up the sick, console the grieving, and lift up those who despair. Be especially with Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Pam Gruel, Renata McKenzie, Lee Clark, June Brightfeller, Linda Kakamas, Harry and Harriet Long, Barbara Seth, Don Hanna, Dot Wilson, Pat Sparks, Becca McKenzie, Segundo and Nellie Saldana, Roger Carr, Betty Lou Eckenrod, Jerry Updegrove and the Updegrove family, Greg Waddington, David, Marissa Vandenbosch, John and Nancy Berube, Howard Evers, William Hitch, Dharma Lucan, Russell Chambly, Gail Kelso, John Eustace, Julia Summerland, Harold and Carol Peterson, the family of Doretta Conacy, the family of Cheryl DeLuca, and the family of Lillian Willie, and those whom we name now before you, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, hear our cry when we call to you. Cast out the fear of sin and death, so that we, along with all of creation, may praise you with open and trusting hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are going to share the peace in a moment. And for those at home, we invite you to share the peace with those around you in your homes. For those of us in the sanctuary, we ask that you share the peace with those in your immediate household. And for others, please turn around and wave. You can share the peace that way too. Please re respect the distance and let's maintain that as we share the peace. But I do wanna speak with our live stream worshipers for a moment. We are glad that you joined us today 
and we bless you to give your burdens over to Jesus and to carry the burdens of those around you. I want to thank Kristen Schlegel, who is our live stream operator today, and we want to offer those at home, please be at peace and serve the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us, and we look forward to having you with us again. <laughs>